Hey guys, how are you? All right, so I am live now, but this is almost super now. I am doing a premiere tomorrow and I'm trying it through Zoom because I wanted to use my screen share to kind of show you guys some stuff as I'm talking about it. So um, as of right now, well, right now, it's Sunday afternoon, so I'm doing this ahead of time. But as of Monday on the 19th, I will be at the time of this airs at my best friend's house in Missouri, Lord willing. So I plan to leave tomorrow or this morning. <laughs> I plan to leave Monday morning early. <clears throat> she lives about five or six hours away. So I'm taking, it's me and the girls, Abby on down. We're going to go there for the week. I have not seen her in two years. So I'm super excited about it. Last year, uh, around the time that I normally go, they all got COVID and her husband was in bad shape. He actually almost died from it. It was pretty scary there for a little bit, but uh, they all got COVID last year. So I wasn't able to uh, go last year, but I am super excited because I get to go this year. So she has not even met Hannah yet. So she'll be meeting Hannah for the first time. And then Kelly was only six months old the last time we went. So obviously Kelly has grown quite a bit too. So this is kind of pertaining and what kind of made me think of this topic um this whole topic of self-care and avoiding burnout as moms especially moms to many um even if you're a mom to one or you're a mom to two you can also have burnout because let's face it taking care of kids it's a 24-hour job it is often with no gratitude on your kids parts right uh, most of the time, if you have a baby, you're just trying to keep them alive all day and then keep yourself alive and take care of yourself mentally and physically and all this stuff. So um, I am definitely this year, I have been on the urge of burnout many times when it comes to even ministry work, um, homeschooling, teaching piano, you know, all these things that just keep piling up and piling up. And I've had to recognize the signs of when I'm about to be on the verge of burnout and kind of step back and reevaluate and tweak some things. And so I hope this can be a help. I definitely leave comments, you know, hopefully I can be interacting here. Um, it is my friend's church's VBS. So we will be involved in that all week. It'll be fun, but it's from six to eight. So I will try to pop in when I'm able to and leave a comment here or there, but yeah, I'll check in, um, leave comments. You know, talk about things that you help as, I, as I'm talking about these different things, talk about things that help you, you know, to avoid burnout. But I think one of the number one things when it comes to self-care is just recognizing when you're on the verge of burnout and something needs to change. And um, oftentimes when we get to that point where we're just, we're stressed out, we're sick of everybody, you know, we just want to crawl under a rock for like a week and just stay there we do things that we regret, you know, we, we have outbursts or, you know, we say things we wish we wouldn't have. Um, we cry, <laughs> not usually for me, but sometimes, sometimes I do, especially postpartum. Um, you know, just recognizing those signs before it actually happens and doing something about it. So there's some things in my own life that I tend to recognize and I tend to think, okay, something needs to change. And one of those is anxiety. Now, I don't normally have anxiety unless I'm in my postpartum year. The first year after having a baby, I deal with it the first six months, especially. Um, now that I am to the eight month mark with Hannah, it is getting better. And uh, I rarely have bouts of anxiety, but I this time was the worst when it came to postpartum anxiety that I've ever had. I don't know if it's my age. I don't know if it's having six girls in a row. This was the absolute worst. <laughs> and we'll kind of be going over some things that kind of helped me um, through the anxiety as far as like um, different things I could do, different uh, natural supplements that I've seen to help. I'm going to show you those in a little bit. But you know, when you're having a lot of anxiety, if you're having a lot of anxiety attacks, for me, an anxiety attack feels like, um, and this, I, for me, it's all directly related to hormonal, hormonal nursing, having after I have a baby, um, I break out in a cold sweat and I get like, um, I start, my body start just breaks out in a cold sweat and my heart starts palpitating and I just have this overwhelming feeling in my stomach, like 
kind of like a nauseous feeling. I don't know if any of you can relate. That's kind of what happens when I have an anxiety attack and then it usually passes. It got so bad with nursing where I was so stressed out about my milk, like let, not letting down with nursing that I would have those anxiety attacks every time I would go to nurse. And it was really bad. I had to do a lot of different um, mental things to kind of help me not get that way. <clears throat> and for me, the best thing that helped whenever I it was just not thinking about it. If I started dwelling on the fact my milk isn't letting down, I'm gonna have to give her a bottle, she's screaming, you know, then that's when I would have, I would break out in a cold sweat and it was awful. Oh, I don't ever want to go back to that again. <laughs> it was awful, awful. So um, recognize if you start having little, you know, anxiety attacks like that, recognize that there's a problem you need to fix. Obviously, I couldn't fix it right away for me because a lot of it was related to just having a baby and my hormones crashing. So when it comes to a situation like that, you just have to realize I'm going to get through this. And so just take it one day at a time. That's what I did. I tried not to think, am I going to have to deal with this the whole year? You know, all these 300 something days while, you know, is this how long it's going to go? I could not think that way. I had to just get through each day as it came. Um, if you start having a lot of depression, I'm not really prone to depression. This is not my um, forte of, of talking about things when it comes to depression. But a lot of women are prone to uh, getting depressed, really battling feelings that get them down a lot. Um, you know, and so if you are a person like me, if, if I if I start getting depressed, maybe for a day or two in a row, I, I know something's off, you know, and I need to fine tune something somewhere. Or and this is a big one. This is my big one. If you're just stressed out all the time, if just everything you do is stressful. You know, you just, you can't relax. You're just always on edge, you know, always just feeling combative or um, just feeling like you're not getting any enjoyment out of life. You know, if you're just stressed out constantly, that's a bad sign. So for me, um, those are kind of the things that lead up to me knowing that, okay, I need to step back. I need to do something to um, alleviate these symptoms. And I've also been reading, um, I've been reading a book on anxiety and it's very interesting in there because the author talks about how um, he did go on medication to help him for a little bit, but he said that he, he always knew that the medication was just masking the symptoms and the symptoms of anxiety was because of a deeper problem. And he recognized that. And as soon as he dealt with the key problem that his anxiety was linked to, he went off the medication. So, you know, if you are having, I've never had to take medication uh, for this, but I definitely am not against it. If you are just to the point where um, you can't cope and life is overwhelming and you just have thoughts of not wanting to go on, you're in a dangerous, dangerous place at that point. So please reach out to someone, reach out to your pastor's wife, reach out to, um, First and foremost, your OBGYN, your medical doctor, um, if it's, you know, for me, I have a great midwife. If I ever had to, I would feel confident in going to her for something like that. You know, get get help from someone because I would rather see someone go on anti-anxiety medication for a little bit for short term to help them get through a rough spot in their life than to do something horrible, you know, and just always remember that, <clears throat> just because you have a bad day, doesn't make it a bad life, you know, and we're all going to have bad days. We just work our way through it. So that being said, um, you know, there are little things that you can do when you start to feel like maybe you're on the edge of, you know, being burned out, whether that comes to anything in life that you're doing. So identify the things that are causing it. So once again, like that book that I'm reading, get to the root cause. Where, where is this anxiety stemming from a lot of times I can tell because I start dreaming about it and it becomes very it's like it's there subconsciously and it comes out in my dreams so um do I think God still works in dreams not necessarily but I think that the mind is a powerful thing and whether or not we even know we're thinking about things for me that's where it comes out as I start dreaming about it so you know if you have a stressor in your life can it be helped can you help this you know, can you remedy it? Can you, is it related to hormones? Um, 
you know, is it, is it related to a big event that you have going on in your life? Are you moving? You know, is that why you're stressed out? Obviously when there's things that are big and going on in your life, such as a big life change, you know, getting ready to get married, getting ready to have a baby, getting ready to move, um, you know, your husband's job is switching, just different things like that. You're always going to have stress relating that that's a little different, I think, than burnout. I feel like God equipped us women in ways where we can get through a huge stressful situation. But I feel like if it's stress after stress, after stress, after stress, after stress, that's when it's going to lead to burnout. So you have to be really, really careful about that. <clears throat> so then also just, you know, is, is it related to hormones? Because obviously for those of us that are women, we know that so much is tied up into our hormones. Does that give us an excuse? No, but it can help us be aware of when our hormones are shifting and okay, maybe I need to take it easy on this day because, you know, my hormones are shifting. I'm not capable right now of dealing with a very stressful situation in my life. So I'm just going to take it easy and I'm going to um, maybe not have as high expectations for that day. Maybe I'm going to have my kids do four pages of schoolwork instead of 10 pages of schoolwork, you know, just realize what you're going through when it comes to hormones. Now, I wanted to share my screen and I want to show you some of the things. Ooh, if I can get to it, let me see. Here we go. Okay. So some of the things that helped me this year and they're relatively cheap. Um, this is just, I don't know how good this stuff is as far as like, you know, organic or something. I felt like the first time I bought this, it was like organic, but I'm not seeing that it is, but Moringa has helped me. And Moringa is actually, um, people in Africa, African women use this a lot and it helps your milk supply. And it's actually a superfood. So I did try one certain Moringa and it gave me horrible headaches, horrible. This kind has not, I'm very, very used to this. It does not give me headaches. It's just, um, and it's got 700 milligrams per serving. I take, I think I take like four of these a day, but it has a lot. It has 180 capsules. So it lasts quite a bit. It, well, it lasts quite a long time, but that's just 1099. I'll post these links too under this as soon as I'm done. <clears throat> so I really, really, um, like this Moringa. I think it definitely, definitely helped. Another thing, I never tried this one. I almost did, but I, instead I just got the herbs that were in this because it's pretty pricey. It's $40. So this is why I did not try it. <laughs> and there's only 60 capsules in it, but this has ashwagandha um, and it's got a bunch of other stuff to emotionally help you. It looks like stress relief from vitamin D. And that's another thing too, I didn't even mention, I take vitamin D every day and you need to get vitamin D. And so, I mean, just going out in the sun helps so much. Um, but I do take four capsules of vitamin D. Most women are deficient in vitamin D and don't even know it. And if you are deficient, that can really lend to your stress. But yeah, it's got mood support from ash ashwagandha and stress relief from vitamin D and it has chamomile in it as well. So if anyone's tried this, here's the things in it. See, so as you can see, it's got ashwagandha, flax, blueberry, chamomile, DHA, milk thistle. That's interesting. I used to take milk thistle for my liver all the time. Saffron and black pepper. And then it's got, so it's got some vitamins, vitamin B12. Vitamin Bs, some women love them. Some women can't stand them. But, um, and there's your vitamin D. So this looks like it would be good. If anyone's used them, let me know. But I've taken the pink, um, pink stork stuff before and I seem to like it. So, but for sure I took vitamin D I've been on, this is what I've been on for the last eight months. I took vitamin D four capsules a day. I take Moringa four capsules a day, two in the morning, two at night of each of these. And then this is Shataveri. I've also been taking, this is the exact brand as well. It's only $14. Um, it says it's organic. <clears throat> it has Shat Shatavari, Ashwagandha, and what does it say, Brahmi? But once again, you notice it's also supporting breastfeeding. So breastfeeding, root powder extract, rejuvenation, anxiety, stress relief, and prolactin, lactation support. 
So this is another one of those things that I didn't even know this until I started researching after I had the baby that this stuff was even um, like a thing, shot of Ari. I'd never even heard of it. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but but yeah, it says it's a natural remedy long used in some place with an A, the traditional medicine of India, sourced from the roots of the asparagus, something kind of, some kind of plant. Traditionally used in medicine, women have had long taken shot of Ari through their lives to balance hormones and promote healthy reproductive function. And then it's said to offer a variety of health benefits. So um, this is what it's supposed to do. It supports a healthy response to stress, leads to better brain function, makes you feel energetic. I don't know about that. <laughs> supports healthy women, hormone production, boosters and builds immunity support. So that's just some of the things with Shadavari. But maybe, you know, maybe me just mentioning this will help you. I did a lot of research into this after I had Hannah and I was having such a hard time with all of the... Um, the hormones and things that came with it. So, and then too, I just, I'm going to read something from the Gently Let Sisters group um, in a minute, but here's a shout out for this one too. This is a private group. We have quite a few right now. We have a uh, 366 members, which is nice. And we just ask, um, you know, give encouragement, ask questions, different things like that. So you can, you can look that up and then you just have to answer the questions, just proving that you're a woman <laughs> and that you are a Christian and, you know, you want to, um, you want to serve God, but I'm going to stop the share now. So, yeah, so that's, those are some of the things that I took to help me and it seemed to help. I don't know, maybe it's just cause she's getting older, but one of the things that's really played into me almost feeling completely burned out and just stressed out and I can't do this and constantly like anxiety is the lack of sleep. So as many of you know, um, I did not want to go sleep with Hannah this time around, but it ended up happening around three months is when she started. I, I tried from the day she was born. I had her my little side sleeper and I put her in there and she would fall asleep a lot of times when she was a newborn, just on her own and then sleep in there for a little bit. Well, around three months old, that's when she started waking up as soon as I would lay her down and just freaking out, screaming, crying. Well, I'm like, I'm not letting her do cry it out at this age. You know, she doesn't understand. She's only three months. So we started close with you. Now she's eight months old, five months later. And this last couple of weeks, I've had to break it because I just, I feel like all night long, she's just constantly tossing and turning. She's not sleeping well. I'm not sleeping well. And so I did start sleep training her uh, two weeks ago because I was just on the verge of burnout and I recognized that I was stressed out. I just, I felt like, okay, it's one thing to, you know, spend my day chasing two babies all day long, but I at least need my nights because I can't do it all day. And then all night long as well, I'm not sleeping. So, um, I moved her pack and play into Chloe's bedroom, which is the bedroom right next to us. And I have, I started sleep training her and I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the just shut the door and let them scream until they just pass out on their own. I just, oh, I don't like that. Maybe as I'm getting older, I'm getting softer. I don't know. But, <clears throat> um, I, what I do is I lay her down and sometimes if she nurses to sleep, that's great, which is rare because then I'll, I'm able to lay her down and it's fine. And at first, when, even when I would, even when she would fall asleep, uh, she would pop up as soon as I would lay her down. She hated that bed, like pop up screaming instantly. We're, we're past that. We're two weeks in. Yay. I can finally lay her down now. She doesn't pop up screaming. She's comfortable. She's used to it now, but it was really tough at first. She likes, you know, most babies like co-sleeping right next to her mom. So whether or not you like co-sleeping, whether or not you do, you have to do what's best for your family and your mental, you know, whatever. And I was on the verge of mentally being <laughs> burned out. So um, what I would do is I would lay her down half asleep, half awake. I'd rock her for a while, sing to her nurse or whatever, or make sure she has a full belly. And then I'd let her just fuss for a little bit. And then every five minutes I'd go in there, I'd lay her back down, put her passy, pat her back. And then I would leave. I'd come in like every five to 10 minutes to do that. And it took a few days of that before she would even get comfortable in her own bed by herself. And now, oh my goodness, last night, I feel like we had a huge breakthrough because, uh, well, the last few nights she has been waking 
I put her down around eight. She wakes up around 10 30 and I nurse her and then she will not settle again till about midnight. So I'm still tired. But then the last two nights before this last one, she slept until six. So from 12 to six, she's never done that her whole life. So we are getting close. So I got six hours of sleep both those nights and I felt like amazing because I've only been living off of three or four of broken sleep. So then last night, um, I had to run to Walmart. And so I told Abby, I'm like, she's fed. I nursed her. She's really tired. It's like 7 30, 7 or 7 30 at night. I said, she might go to sleep. So Abby, um, rocked her to sleep. And when I got home, she was still asleep. Well, I had to like get her up at 11 to dream feed her. And then I laid her back down. She never woke up that whole time. So from seven until three in the morning, she slept. So that is huge. It's like eight hours. And she's never, ever, ever done that. So I'm feeling hopeful. Of course, she was up by 4.30 since she had been to bed at 7. She was up at 4.30 in the morning, ready to go. And of course, it's Sunday. So I was ready really, really early this Sunday, <laughs> this morning, because she was up. But sleep is one of the things for me that is like medicine. I need my sleep. When I start going long periods without sleep, I feel like I'm losing my mind. So if you're like me, recognize that and do whatever you have to, to ensure that you're getting rest. Our bodies and our minds need sleep to repair themselves and for your mental health and different things like that. So for me, I can't live off of three hours, four hours. Now I can go the first six weeks, you know, when you're running on adrenaline, that's one thing, but I got to have sleep. So if you're like me, you know, recognize the need for sleep and do something to help that. Um, also now I'm, I'm talking about things that help me, you know, for you, you might be different, you know, sleep might not be your jam, maybe just taking a bath by yourself. is. So just recognize whatever area that you need, um, just time to recharge. Also for me, something that helps is talking about it. Obviously I have gently less sisters, right? So I like to talk about things. I like talking it out, um, and like finding support groups. Um, gently those sisters and it's kind of like a support group, right? A support groups for moms. And I'm going to show you why, cause I'm going to read this is why I like this group so much because of things like this. I'm a veteran mom and this totally encouraged me this past week. I just love this post. So if you guys post stuff in gently those sisters, I hope you don't mind if I read it. Okay. Because, <laughs> Um, just let, let me know, put a disclaimer on there when you post it, please don't read this. But some of this is so good. I just, I feel like other moms would benefit if you're not in this group. So um, I just had a conversation with a young mom and thought it would be nice to share here. She's home with her first baby and asked me with tears in her eyes. What if I don't like motherhood? Do I grin and bear it until they're old enough to be more independent? It turns out she didn't hate motherhood. She hated the impossible pressure she put on herself to be productive every second of the day. That's amazing. Yes, I totally identify with that. I told her that a turning point in my life as a young mom was to do nothing during nap time. Very good advice. At least no chores. I'm not a napper myself, so I would listen to sermons or watch a movie, make myself a drink, call a friend or sister, write an email. I realized that my to-do list of chores could mostly be done with my toddlers around. In fact, watching me clean and cook was fun for the babies, but mom on the phone or her computer is impossible. So true. Motherhood is not meant to be a grin and bear it situation. Of course, it's very hard and exhausting sometimes, but we're also meant to find peace and enjoyment in our day to day. We need to find what recharges our batteries and do it more con consciously. As I'm typing this, my 18 month old just emptied the entire Civil War drawer and it was totally worth it for 10 minutes of indulging in my own thoughts. So true, Laura, that was awesome. And I did not even like this. What is wrong with me? Sorry if I don't like some of your stuff. I just don't think about it sometimes. I'm going to love that post because that's a great post. <clears throat> but I love how she said motherhood is not supposed to be just to grin and bear it until they're old enough to be independent. And some days, don't lie, we're going to feel like that. Like we're just trying to get through the day. When is it bedtime? You know, realize that you're going to have days like that, but not every day should just be like, oh, I can't wait until they're older. <laughs> you know, you want to enjoy your kids because your kids can tell if you're not enjoying them. <laughs> so definitely, you know, join a support group or something on Facebook if that's going to help. I know it helps me to talk about it. Have a close friend that you can vent to. I found that it's better for me to vent to my girlfriends rather than my husband 
because like I've said before, husbands like to try to fix things. They're fixers. So if you vent about your bad day, your husband might be like, well, why don't you do this? And why don't you do this? And you're like, I don't want advice on what to do better. I just need to vent. <laughs> you guys know how that is. So, you know, and that's where your girlfriends, your mom, you know, your mom who's been through it before, that's where they all come in. So I was watching a video the other day. I did not agree with all this man's logic um, because he was, it was a video about <clears throat> how to train your kids without spanking them, which I don't, obviously I believe in the Bible and the Bible talks about um, spanking your kids. So I do believe that spanking is necessary for raising kids, but he was talking about, he had some, he had an interesting point in there though, because I wanted to see how can you possibly raise kids to obey, you know, without spanking and without any consequences. And it all came down to basically from a very, very, very young age training. Okay. That's pretty good advice. He was talking about, and I've been implementing this with Hannah because she is into everything and she's constantly trying to put stuff in her mouth. And he was talking about when they start crawling, when they're very young, um, if they start crawling for something that they're not supposed to have, like an outlet, you just gently grab their ankle and you say no, and you just hold them, you know, they're going to keep trying to lunge forward. You say no, and you just stay there. You don't let them, you know, keep crawling. And he said, you just keep, continue to do that. He said, most kids, they'll try to squirm and fight to get to it first. But when they realize every time you say no, that you're not letting them go for that, eventually they're going to give up. So, and then he also said, um, which I thought that was pretty good advice, especially for crawling babies. You know, you're not going to be walloping your crawling babies. So that is a good way to train them of the dangers, you know, things that they're not supposed to have, cords, outlets, whatever. And he said, when you do it that way, they learn no. And so then from, from the time that they learn that, you can just say, no, Hannah, and they'll listen. Very good advice. Um, he did say something, though, that was quite interesting. He said when he was raising his kids, he didn't let them do things that made him resent them or made him not like them. I thought that's actually pretty good advice, too, because I found in my own home if my kids are constantly aggravating me and constantly annoying me, it's usually over something specific, such as tattling, fighting with each other, um, some annoying habit. And that's when I need to nip it in the bud because I don't, as a mom, we don't want to be perpetually annoyed by our kids. You know, we want to enjoy our kids. We want to have fun with our kids. We don't want to be irritated with them all the time. So I thought that was pretty good advice. So if there's something that's causing you a lot of stress in your life when it comes to your kids, identify it and maybe try to take care of that um, so that you're not just constantly irritated with them over it. So, but, okay, I'm going to wrap it up here pretty quick. It's going to be a shorter one tonight. Um, recognize the need to decompress, okay? Because I think of it, I think, you know, I think men have an easier time just taking guilt-free time to themselves than women do. I know for me, if I want to leave the house or do anything, it's like, oh, I don't know. It's, it's quite the, the routine. Okay. You need to do this and you need to watch this baby and you need to make sure they don't choke and you need to make sure everything's picked up and you need to make sure they don't fall down the stairs. And you know, it's like all these things I have to constantly tell my family and my kids, my husband's like, all right, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> And then he doesn't give one thought to it. You know, that's just how it is, which is the difference between men and women. Every time we get ready to go on a date together, he's like, okay, let's go. Like, come on, come on, come on. And I'm like, okay, now do this. this, this. And he's like, let's go. Like, I got to tell him this, you know, I got to, I got to give him the list or whatever. And he's like on the way out the car. And I'm still like trying to give instructions. He's like, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. <laughs> and they have been so far. So, <laughs> but that's just the difference between men and women. But I, I feel like men just instinctively know that sometimes they need time to themselves, whether that's for my husband, it's going out in a kayak by himself for a few hours in the sun, fishing, um, whether that's going golfing, whether that's, you know, just them, I don't know if they like to go to Starbucks and get on their computer and drink coffee or whatever. I don't know if your husband likes doing that. Just, you know, just something that, that guys know. I, I feel like they instinctively know that. Whereas women, we have a harder time doing things um, that by ourselves because we feel guilty, but
but recognize that when you are taking care of yourself and you're um, providing self-care for yourself, that you are actually helping your family. You're, you're making a better, a better mom, a nicer mom. I was talking about this to Janae in our church about the sleep training thing. And she told me she's always been picky about it because she's like, I am a mean mom when I don't get sleep. <laughs> and I'm like, I am too. And not so much mean. I'm just like, ah, I'm just like, ah, just weepy. And is this phase ever going to get over in my life? You know, just mentally, it's hard for me. And, you know, so recognize the things that make you a mean mom or a stressed out mom or an irritated mom and deal with them. So, you know, Janae's realized that she's got to have sleep. So she's got to be picky about sleep from day one with her kids. You know, take breaks if you have to. When Whether that's, um, now there's obviously some things in your life you're going to have to keep doing. You're going to have to keep providing food for your family. You're going to have to keep providing clothes. You're going to have to keep providing <clears throat> a house that's, you know, clean. <laughs> so there's some things that we have to just do because we have to do them. And I would even throw church in here because I feel church is so essential and so important. I'm not talking about like if you have a sick day or something, but I would not take a break from church um, for even a couple of weeks, just because I feel like when you start taking breaks from church, a lot of times people never return. And I've seen that being in the ministry. A lot of people that say, we just need a break. We're burned out. So they cut out church and five years later, they never got back in. So unfortunately, um, through COVID, we've had a couple of families that they, they started, they stayed home at the beginning of COVID and now it's been a year and a half and they haven't been back yet. So, and my husband still talks to him and stuff, but I, I often wonder, are we ever going to see him again? You know, I'd like to see him again. I miss them. So we let them know that we miss them, but they still, they're sitting out because once you get into that habit, it's really, really hard to start something back up. I heard that it takes 10 days to establish a habit. So if it takes 10 days to establish a habit, I would think it would not take much more of that to get out of that habit. So, you know, take breaks. If, if you, if school is like overwhelming and you just had a horrible week, take a couple days off, you know, you're in this for the long haul. If you have lots of kids, like I do, I've got eight kids. Yes. I've graduated two of them, <clears throat> but I still have six more. So I've got at least 18 more years of homeschooling left. That's a long time. So this is a marathon, not a sprint. So realize that if you're getting burned out, you really, really need to take a break. If you have too much on your plate, um, my husband, because our house is being remodeled right now, he really, really wanted me to take out. I wasn't planning on taking music lessons off this summer, but he realized that I was on the verge of just having too much on my plate. He asked me to take off um, June and July off of lessons. So I have. And now I'm thinking, how in the world would I have done everything that's been going on as far as like VBS is going on and our, my old church going to my friend's house, the remodel, <sighs> how would I have dealt with all that while teaching, you know, so many hours of piano a week as well. So listen to your husband. If he thinks you're getting burned out and he, he tells you, maybe you need to step back, you know, then do that step back and listen to him. He can kind of, he can see. You can see when you're on the verge of burnout. I would say lower your expectations. Um, I have much lower expectations when it comes to the amount of things I get done every day now. <laughs> I think back, and I mean, some days I would clean the house from top to bottom and then cre create this five course dinner and do all the laundry and have perfectly scrubbed shiny kids. You know, my husband got home and I'm just thinking, how? I how in the world did I do all that? And it's because number one, I was in my 20s, so I had more energy. But number two, I think I just had these super high expectations and I was super stressed out if they didn't, if it didn't happen. If I had a bad day where the baby was clinging or seething and I had to just spend half the day rocking the baby and comforting, realize that your children are your biggest mission, not your house. The dishes can wait, um, but sometimes your kid just needs you in the moment for whatever need they might have, whether that's teething, whether that's being sick. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if your child is happy and loved and cared for, that's a win. So I came to that realization that my expectations were just way too over the top. <clears throat> so I've lowered them quite a bit. Another thing that has worked for me in the past when I had all little kids, not so much anymore, we're kind of out of this habit because we have older kids 
that help out a lot. <clears throat> and we really only have two really littles now. We've got two babies, as I call them, Kelly and Hannah, which if you hear them, they're in the background. Um, we had reestablished early bedtimes. And I've talked about this before. That's why most of the time our kids were in bed between seven and eight when we had three little ones, because then that was our time to decompress. And I feel like I was like super good about um, this when my kids were younger, just because I realized I had to have that in order to survive and in order not to burn out. I had to have those early bedtimes. So that definitely, definitely helped. Um, those are really the only, the only things that I wrote down that have helped me. What has helped you guys? Um, another thing is uh, working out. Some women really, really like working out. I do like working out. I actually joined Planet Fitness a few months ago, but I have not made it a very good practice of going. I'm going I've been going about once a week, which I need to go at least three times a week. So um, healthy eating, that's some women's thing. Um, I know writing has always been a huge one of mine, even though I've been not been able to get to writing very much this last year either, since I've had the two babies. You guys that have been along for the whole the whole journey of Gently Love Sisters, um, you've watched me go from having six kids, you know, to eight kids. And the last couple of years has probably been tough. Maybe I needed to have the last two babies, you know, so I could just like sympathize with all you young moms again. <laughs> Cause I had kind of gotten through that phase and when I restarted it all, I started over. So um, the last two years has been tough because it's, it's tough having little kids. Even when you have help, it's, it's tough. So I've recognized the need more than ever to just decompress, whether that's getting a Starbucks. For me, coffee is one of my love languages, as you guys know. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, throw the kids in the car seat and go through the drive through That helped me sometimes because it's like a 20 minute drive there and a 20 minute drive back. Um, so that the kids can't go anywhere in their car seats. They can't die. They can't choke on anything. You know, Hannah right now is just everything. Oh my goodness. It's, she's like on a suicide mission. It's a full-time job keeping her alive. She finds the teeniest little thing on the carpet and she puts it in her mouth. So, and that's hard when you've got an active home, just keeping every little thing picked up off the floor is really difficult. So every minute we have to watch that child. And so, you know, I sometimes just need them strapped down. <laughs> So sometimes we'll strap them down. I'm like, Abby, let's go. Well, like, guys, get in the car. We're going to go through Starbucks. <laughs> you know, that's one of my ways to cope. So find the ways that help you cope and do it because you're, you're the rudder of the ship at home. You know, whatever direction you go, that's what, that's what your home life is going to be. So if you're constantly stressed out, your kids are going to be stressed out and they're going to feel like they have to walk on eggshells and mom's going to explode. And so if you are taking care of yourself, <clears throat> your kids are going to be happier. They're going to have a happier mom. Your husband's going to be happier. He's going to have a happier wife. You know, explain to him how important it is to just have a couple hours a day that you can decompress if that's what you need or a couple hours a week even. You know, I'm not one of these people that think that you never can have time to yourself. I think it's vitally important because I've been on the edge of burnout a lot throughout my life. I'm a very, very full plate. You feel like not only do, as a pastor's wife, not only do I meet all the needs of um, my kids, but I, I have to watch for stuff in the church too. You know, I have to, I have to watch for, is this person's feelings getting hurt? Am I being nice enough to this person? Does everyone feel like they're loved? Does anyone, everyone feel like they're accepted? So you're constantly watching out for other people's needs and your husband's needs, obviously, and then just trying to serve the Lord as well. And so your self-care can often take a backseat. But you definitely need to be aware and don't let these things slide until they build up and build up and build up and you're depressed, you're having anxiety. Um, you know, it's, it's not good for anyone. So I hope this has helped. I definitely care for all of you that watch. Um, if you want to be alerted to when we go live every week, this, just text um, Gently Led to 31996. I have over 90 subscribers on there that get a text every week. So I'm not going to keep paying for it if it's not, if you guys aren't paying attention to it. <laughs> I pay like 25 bucks a month for it. So that's going to go bye-bye if it's not even helping, which I think it does. Once I send that text, everyone starts joining. So, but leave questions, leave comments. 
um, I'm hoping to have a guest on here either this next Monday or the week after. So look for that. And I hope you guys have a great week. I know I will be decompressing over tea at my best friend's house. We have been best friends since we were 12. And I am her, I am Anne and she is Diana. And we are kindred spirits for sure. And it's funny because we I have Anne's personality and she has Diana's personality. And um, she's amazing. So we'll be there in Missouri enjoying our week. So 